Communism, communism, atheism, Mark Cuban, cyberbullying. What do these all have in common, you might ask? Well, they were all hit topics on a little well-known show called Girl Meets World. What is Girl Meets World, you may ask? Let me take you back to a time. It was 2012. Wizards, done. Sunny of a chance, over. Hannah Montana, retired. Sweet Life on Deck, finished. Jonas, flopped. Disney Channel was in desperate need of a hit. And who else to turn to but executive Corey Marsh? My one thing was I went into the Disney Channel building and I sat down with the president of Disney Channel and I said, I want to make history. And that's what this is. According to Ben Savage, a Disney executive named Corey Marsh had been obsessed with Boy Meets World growing up. And he decided to go out and speak to the original executive producer of Boy Meets World, Michael Jacobs. And he was like, let's do a reboot. And Michael Jacobs was like, I love money. This is perfect. So Michael Jacobs, he goes back on as producer and showrunner. He gets the original crew back together. He calls some of the original cast. And he's like, let's do a spinoff on Disney Channel. The show is officially aired on Disney Channel on June 27, 2014 to children. Excited Boy Meets World millennials, preteens, and teenagers like myself in desperate need of a good Disney Channel show once again. And compared to current Disney Channel hits such as Dog with a Blog, I Didn't Do It, this was a smash success Disney was looking for. But was this show good? No. At the time though, I loved it. Like, oh my God, like on my Tumblr, I was reblogging gift sets every single episode. I was even tweeting about it. Like I was obsessed, but looking back now, some of these episodes are just wrong and borderline offensive and they should have not been talked to impressionable teenagers at all. So let's explore this and all of these crazy episodes in how did this air? What is Girl Meets World? For those who are already familiar with the basic synopsis and characters of Girl Meets World, skip ahead to the next part. Unless you need a refresher, then go ahead, stay here. I'm going to give you just a really, really basic, quick refresher. So Girl Meets World was a kids show spinoff of Boy Meets World from the 90s. Um, Corey and Topanga get married and they move to New York and it follows their daughter, Riley Matthews as she navigates New York City with her friends. He plays a major role in the show. He is their teacher, so he fills in as a Mr. Feeney type of role. He gives them lessons and he teaches them values, you know, just cheesy little stuff. Topanga is a lawyer in this show, but she's usually delegated off to a side plot involving their other child, Augie Matthews. Girl Meets World also brought back fan favorite characters from Boy Meets World, like Eric, Sean, and Minkus, plus plus many, many, many more. So who the hell are all these people I just named? What, what is O'Reilly? Let's meet the characters. Once again, if you already know who these characters are, you already know what's going on, you just want to get to like, what were these episodes about? What the hell was wrong with this show? Skip ahead. If not, let me tell you who's everyone. So our main character is Riley Matthews. Everything just revolves around her. Like every class deals with only her issues and nobody else's. She's always really happy and peppy and she lives in this place called Riley Town that's mentioned throughout the show. It seems like the writers don't really know what they're doing of her because sometimes she's just a normal girl. Sometimes she's like really dumb. And then sometimes she's just really, really, really happy. She never has like a consistent story arc during the show, which is a bit odd for your main character next character maya hart she is disney's answer to sam puckett from my carly she's poor she has a single mom no dad she rebels against all the teachers doesn't get good grades but she's like a clean version you know she's not fighting people with butter socks and like being angry and going to juvie no she's like learning lessons and she's growing as a human and she's trying her best she's disney sam puckett she's not the sam puckett everyone wants her to fail You'll learn about this throughout this video, but it's just no one wants her to have a good life. They just want her to keep being on this path because that's who she is. If my friend was wanting to get good grades, I wouldn't be like, this is who you are. You can't get good grades. Like what? And she's played by Sabrina Carpenter, who you may know from the hit song Feather, Nonsense, from other Disney Channel movies like Adventures in Babysitting, or for being part of the Olivia Rodrigo scandal. Next character, Corey Matthews. 
world's worst teacher of all time. He's from Boy Meets World. He was the original star. And now he's a history teacher at the middle school and then also at the high school because they protest until he moves up a grade. He follows the girls wherever, basically. He literally, none of his lesson plans make sense. Like, if I was in this history class, I'd be screwed. I wouldn't have learned anything. He's just the worst. He's the worst. Topanga. She's Riley and Augie's mom from Boy Meets World, all married to Corey. She's a lawyer, and then she also buys a cafe in the later seasons. She, once again, as I said earlier, she basically gets revolved to, like, a side character, but she's an actual good mom. Like, when she's on screen, I'm not angry like I'm angry when I see Corey Matthews' face, you know? Augie, he's not really important to this video at all, but I'm just going to tell you real quick. That's Riley's brother. He's five. He has five-year-old problems. He's all right. I don't get mad when he's on screen. Farkle Minkus. So he is one of Riley's best friends as well, Riley and Maya's. He's a genius. His dad is Stuart Minkus and his mom is Jennifer from Boy Meets World. Farkle Minkus, he's a genius. He's super rich. He'll take over the classes sometimes for Farkle time where he just talks on and on about something that he's interested in. He's played by Corey Fogelmanis, who you might remember from the movie Ma as a love interest. Also, Fargo goes through this really crazy hair journey throughout the show where he's like a bowl cut like the Beatles, but then all of a sudden he gets a quaff like, you know, every 2010s British YouTuber. He, he goes through it. So we have Lucas. Lucas is a transfer student from Texas. He becomes friends with Riley and Maya and Fargo's gang. He causes so much <laughs> for no reason. I do not like him. I do not vibe with him at all. Um, and he's a bad boy. If you hurt one of his friends, he breaks stuff. And he's talk like this. And it's just like, I don't vibe with him. Josh Matthews. He's Corey's younger brother from the Boy Meets World series, but the actor is now different and not like the baby. Um, things to note. He is an adult, not a child. He is a high school senior at the first and second season. And he's a college freshman at the third season. And they say, oh, he's a nice guy. I just want everyone to remember for... No reason at all. He is not a minor. Smackle. The actor who plays Smackle has since come out as a trans man and uses he, they pronouns. For the character of Smackle, I will be using she pronouns just for the character since the character is female presented. Smackle's whole joke is that she's just girl Farkle. Um, she becomes more important throughout the series and we're going to explore that in one of the episodes we talk about today. Finally, we have a new addition to the friend group in season two by the name of Zay. Zay, he's another transfer student bad boy from Texas that used to be best friends of Lucas. He's just there as comedic relief. The writers never really do anything with his character. They don't try. Yeah. So those are the characters we'll be talking about. Let's dive into these episodes. Girl meets communism. Riley and Lucas are running a student court alongside other students, but they are extras, so they will not have lines in this. Thank you very much. Corey, of course, is the head of the club because there are no other teachers in this school, in case you haven't figured that one out. So Maya and Farkle end up getting in trouble because Farkle let Maya cheat off his papers. Maya turns out she retains information better by cheating, which she demonstrates, of course. Riley doesn't want Maya to get in trouble, so she's trying to figure out any way to make sure that the sentence she gives Maya is lenient. Because once again, her and Lucas are the only ones to say in this entire court. Which brings us to Corey's lesson of the week, communism. Okay, so Corey teaches us communism, but the communism he teaches us isn't your typical everyday what communism is, even like completely it's just completely incorrect he goes up to the class and he's like communism it takes away individuality what's your dream um and then a kid will be like um well, i want to be a f potato farmer oh no he goes no you're a factory worker and the other girls go, maya goes i want to be a factory worker and Corey goes no you can't be a factory worker and communism i decide the jobs for you and then farkle's like i want to rule the world and Corey goes, yeah, you can rule the world, but everyone has to take credit for it because that's communism. Communism is you don't get to pick your job and everyone takes credit for everything. That's the only things that you need to know about communism. Thank you, Corey Matthews. Thank you, Disney Channel. So Corey's like, we hate communism. And Riley's like, I love communism. Then Corey straight up starts hugging the American flag and goes, 
no, Riley, no, communism's bad. And Riley announces alongside Maya that she is now a communist. So they start wearing communist pins and talking about communism alongside Farkle. So while Farkle, Maya, and Riley are in communism world, poor Lucas and Zay, they're like, I don't mess with communism. I'm all about individualism, like America. And Corey's like, we need to teach them that communism's bad. So Riley first realizes communism's evil when Maya starts getting good grades. Everyone hates Maya. Boing. So basically, Maya learns to study because Fargo teaches her her study methods. And she starts listing out facts. And Riley's like, oh no, we're not individuals. Maya's getting good grades. So then we go to the, our solving part. So we put, Lucas has built the Berlin Wall around Maya, Riley, and Farkel because the Berlin Wall was built by America to keep communism out, of course. Thank you, Disney Channel. Thank you, Corey Matthews. And then they realize that they are no longer individuals because Corey, all three of them get an A and Corey gives them a C because in communism, no one gets an A. Everything's divided. You get the average. An average of 100 divided by three is a C. I hate this man. So now we get to the ending of the episode, which I'm just going to show you. There you are. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. Riley? I'm proud of you. She pledges allegiance to the flag of America. What am I watching? It's like the opposite. It's like American Propaganda TV 101. What am I watching right now? And this episode was nominated for a Writers Guild of America Best Writing Award. For what? What was that? That's all you need to know about communism. Girl Meets World tackled it great. Girl Meets Atheism. So the episode starts off with Riley and Maya. And Maya finds a $5 bill on the ground and takes it. And Riley's like, no, you can't take it. The bill says, in God we trust. God's watching you, Maya. And Maya's like, I don't believe in God. And Riley's like, mm, what? And so Riley decides for her episode arc, she is going to be a missionary, if you will, a religious converser. And she's going to convert Maya to be a Christian. Great start to the episode. I'm already hyped. Religious freedom, out. So that gives us to Corey's lesson. Corey's lesson of the week is Joan of Arc. Of course, when you go to history class and the lesson is just Joan of Arc for the week. That's all you learn about, Joan of Arc, history. Corey's like, Joan of Arc was someone that believed in something strongly. And Farkle goes, no, she had undiagnosed schizophrenia. <laughs> what? And then Lucas is like, I believe in God. And then Farkle goes, well, then you're crazy. And then so everyone's just kind of like fighting. So Corey's like, my lesson of the week? Um, you two are doing Thomas Jefferson. You two are doing report on Joan of Arc. Class dismissed. Of course, my favorite history project is when I did a report on Joan of Arc or Thomas Jefferson. Oh, and then no one else in the class does a report. Only, of course, Riley Maya, Farkle Lucas. The core four, if you will. Riley is pissed. And Riley and Maya fight because Maya won't believe in God. Riley literally goes, how have my teenage beliefs not rubbed off on you yet? How has my Christianity not made you not want to be an atheist yet? I love Disney Channel. So they switch partners, but then they switch partners again because everyone's fighting because no one believes in God. Then everyone believes in God. And uh, It's a whole mess. And Lucas is like, believing in something's important. Just like that was a little... Sometimes their southern accent, sometimes gone southern accent. And Farkle's like, I don't get how you could believe in that. And then everyone's favorite youth pastor comes in. Woo! Corey! Corey! Teacher, youth pastor, what can't he do? Farkle, I thought men of science were open to new discoveries. Look, people, it's simple. Seeing is believing. So you don't believe that Joan of Arc heard the voice of God? First, you'll have to prove God to me. Okay. Okay, I'm right, or okay, you're actually gonna Take a deep to... breath, Farkle. 
Now that air that you just breathed in, that air that's between you and me, what color is it? It's clear, Mr. Matthews. That's why I can see you. I believe in you because I can see you. That's your position? Yes. Roy G. Biv. Uh-oh. What? We learned about Roy G. Biv in first grade. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. It's a rainbow. You got a prism on you, Farkle? No! Who would carry... Why would you think it... Yes. <laughs> Great. So, remind me what this does, please. It slows down the speed of light and refracts it into the elemental spectrum of colors. Ooh, rainbow. That's right. So, this air that's between you and me isn't really clear at all, is it? Even though we can't see that. Okay, but I don't see how that... What's outside that window, Farkle? Flowers, the fire escape, the street, the people on the street, apartment buildings. And what's in the apartment buildings? I can't see that. People, families, mothers, fathers, kids. And beyond that? The sky, the stars, the whole universe. All of it. Every person, every child, everything out there. Everything we see and we don't see. All these shining elements of a force that bond us together, I like to think of that as a part of God refracted. Aspects of God that I can see. Thank you, Disney Channel. <laughs> Moving on. So all four of them make up after Corey's little youth pastor, a little sermon of the week, if you will. And so they do their reports on Thomas Jefferson and Joan of Arc. World's worst report. They each give a sense each about what they learned. I didn't learn shit about Thomas Jefferson or Joan of Arc from their two sentence reports. And then they probably get an A and everyone else got an F because they didn't even get assigned anything. This is just bullshit. Also, so the end, the very end, you will not believe this. Guess who's converted? Maya. Maya looks at Riley and she goes, I prayed today. And Riley's like, oh my God. And Maya goes, I prayed for other people, not myself. And Riley goes, wow, I like what you pray for. And that's how the episode ends. This one, this one's a real doozy, my friends. Welcome to Girl Meets I Am Farkle. I Am Farkle is in fact what it's called on Disney Plus. Does anyone know what the reference to I Am Farkle refers to? No? It's from I Am Sam. Yep, that's right. The movie was Sean Penn and Dakota Fanning, where he plays a severely disabled man. And I'm pretty sure people find it offensive. That's what the, they named it after. Do you guess what this episode's about if you don't already know? It's autism. This episode's about autism. And they named the episode I Am Farkle after the movie I Am Sam. Can we just... <sighs> so, Farkle is declared a genius. He takes an IQ test and they're like, you're a genius. And so they have a big party hosted by Stuart Minkus and his wife Jennifer from Boy Meets World. Then Smackle, our good friend Smackle, comes into the mix and she's like, come to Einstein Academy now that you're a genius. I knew we were enemies before, but let's be besties. And Farkle's like, maybe I will. So that brings us to Corey's lesson of the week, which is honestly probably the worst lesson I've ever heard ever in my entire life from any history teacher. The lesson is labels. You know the lesson in history class where you learned about labels? Anyways, so he's on the board and he's like, just because you're a genius, just because you are not a genius or you are a genius like Farkle and Mozart and Einstein and Steve Jobs, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, labels don't matter. It's just what makes you. Hashtag history class with Corey Matthews. And then the counselor comes in and she is actually it's so distracting because she's the volleyball player from Good Luck Charlie. And so she comes in and she's like, Farkle. I need to talk to you and then sad music plays and you're like I don't know what's going on because why are we we don't know why it's sad and that brings us to they want to see if I have autism you don't let's go tell them you don't no you can't be autistic you can't I mean it's not that it's not that big of a deal no I will stop you I was just trying to tell you I wasn't, I wasn't like trying to ruin your vibe girly <laughs> So that's my impression of Sabrina Carpenter. Anyways, so they look at the symptoms and Sabrina Carpenter decides, Farkle, you're going to change yourself. Literally, worst friend. Riley and Maya are the absolute worst in this episode. People with Asperger's aren't comfortable being touched or receiving affection. They may struggle to fully understand emotion or love. Check, check, checky, check, check. Farkle, what are you talking about? 
You love Riley and me since the day we met. You married us. It wasn't real. Ow. <laughs> but it's very sweet, and it's all about emotions. You guys are my best friends. Please promise me one thing. Anything. Please don't ever let me not understand love. But I think the worst part is when Farkle goes, Guys, make sure I know what love is. Shut the f*** up! People with autism can love just fine. What is this crap? What is Disney putting on air? Like, this is gonna make people feel so bad about having autism. If you're watching something and they're like, people with autism can't feel love. That's so hurtful. That's so irresponsible. That's so bad. This is so bad. Now we're to the next part. They're in the cafe and they're talking about autism. And they're like, Farkle, we're gonna teach you love. You can no longer love me and Maya. You're gonna love Smackle. And that's just how this works, you know? The minute someone tells you you're moving on, you're moving on. So Farkle goes and talks to Smackle. And then Farkle's like, I might have autism. Smackle goes, okay, that's cool. Like, just an appropriate response. It's like his actual friend should be, why is his worst enemy better at this? I. So then Smackle's like, can I come on a tour of your school? Cause you came on a tour of my school. And cause they just need to bring Smackle in that classroom. They're like, she doesn't go here, but we really need her for this next scene. So the writers are like, let's just have her tour this random ass public school. Bring her in. So Smackle comes on a tour of Farkle school and the guidance counselor's like, I need to talk to Farkle again. And Farkle's like, I know I have autism. And she's like, nah, come with me. Turns out he doesn't have autism. He goes, even though I have every character trait of autism, every symptom, every checkbox, I do not have autism. They actually don't know what's wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with you. You just you just have autism. Like, what, it, what am I watching right now? This is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Corey Matthews, my least favorite man in the entire universe, goes, labels don't matter, but there's a one spectrum that does. That's a spectrum of how you treat others. What? Hi, um, I went and got margaritas with my friends, so. Smackle storms out of the classroom and everyone's like, what's her deal? And then afterwards, for some reason, Smackle's now hanging out with Riley and Maya at Riley's special window. They call it the bay window for those unfamiliar. Smackle's like, I'm upset. Farkle won't like me anymore. And then Maya and Riley have the audacity to go, oh, because you're autistic? And Smackle, who's very clearly like sharing a raw, real moment, is like, yeah, how'd you know? <laughs> Riley and Maya go, because we studied. What? How are you just gonna, someone's telling you something and you're like, we studied all the time of autism and we decided you have it even though we were all screaming a moment. I just, they're awful friends. Absolutely the worst. And then Farkle appears and he's like, Maya, Riley, I don't like you anymore. Smackle, we're dating. And he hugs her and Smackle's like, I don't like it. And Farkle's like, I know. She's like, keep hugging me because we have to teach her what love is because once again, as we know, you can't love if you have autism. It's so messed up. That's just wrong. It's very wrong. Smackle, at the very end, Smackle's hanging out with Lucas and Farkle and Maya and Riley. And they're like, come transfer to our school. Instead of your rich school with actual, like, good grades and crap, transfer to our public school. She's like, why? And they're like, well, you can learn how to make friends. What? You can learn how to make friends if you go to public school. Hang out with us. And then Riley goes, raise your hand if you want to be normal. And Smackle raises her hand. And they all glare at her. And then she puts her hand down. And then the episode ends. Because no one wants to be normal. Labels don't matter. The only spectrum that matters is how you treat others. But if you do have autism, you don't know how to love, apparently. Yeah, this is another episode that actually won... A Writer's Guild of America Award for Best Writing of a Children's Show. Once again, the episode full of stereotypes and just like dramatic moments that don't need to be dramatic. It's just so poorly written. And the fact they're saying it's one of the best writing of episodes. What am I, what are we talking about here? IGN gave this episode an 8 out of 10. It said, the reviewer said, this week's Girl Meets World tackled a difficult subject, autism and handled it nicely, thanks to good writing and good performances. And they also said, of course, part of what makes this episode so heartwarming 
is Riley, Maya's, and Lucas's undying support of Farkle. The initial scenes of them trying to justify Farkle's behavior were sweet, if occasionally too sentimental. Sweet? All your friends screaming at you that you don't have autism is sweet? Sweet? That's nice? I wonder about this reviewer's friends and home life. Are they okay? Were they a mean person? Do they know what friendship is? They're so awful in this. It's crazy. They're mean. They're mean. I don't know. This episode makes me so mad. It's awful. Uh, don't waste your time on it. It will make you mad. The writing's terrible. I'm sure you've already seen people talk about it on Twitter, but it's something we need to just, it has to be talked about. So now we get to a very, very controversial part of the show. Very controversial. And so to first to explain all this, I have to give you a little quick backstory on the love triangle. I made a diagram. So I'll go really quick, really fast, really fast. Riley likes, at the beginning of the show, Riley likes Lucas, and Farkle has a crush on both Maya, Maya and Riley. And then Lucas and Riley both like each other. Then because of peer pressure, Lucas and Riley start dating. But then they realize they were only dating because of peer pressure, so Riley and Lucas break up. But Riley and Lucas still like each other. But then Farkle discovers he has autism, so he starts dating Smackle. Like, I wish that's not how it happened in the episode, but like I said, the writing was so poor. And Farkle and Smackle stay together the rest of the series, and it's basically implied that they're going to get married at the end. Um, then Lucas starts liking Maya, and Maya starts liking Lucas, but Lucas also likes Riley at the same time as liking Maya. And then in the Texas episode, Lucas and Maya start dating, and Riley still likes Lucas as well. And then, but then, Lucas and Maya break up because Lucas still likes Riley. And so now Lucas likes both of the girls, and both of the girls like him, and he decides he needs to make a choice. He's gotta break up this friend groups. He, like, calls them both his girlfriends. It's, like, so stupid. Anyway. So how do we fix this? You see how we have Zay over here in the corner? Zay? He could, he could date someone, you know? He's someone their age. He's someone their age. He could have a good thing with Riley, you know? Bad boy, good girl. He could have a good thing with Maya. They understand each other. There's so many options they could do with any of these characters. Anyone in their grade. Pick an adult man. Josh Matthews. I do not like you. So, this leads us to the horrifying, infamous Ski Lodge episode, which I now have to explain more backstory for, because this season three is when we get really, really plotty for some reason. The writers were like, we gotta have layers upon layers upon layers. This is no longer a show for kids. This is a soap opera. So, in order for me to explain how we even get here, let's back it up. So, the backstory. Maya an 8th grader in the 1st and 2nd season, and a ninth grader in the 3rd season, has a crush on Josh, Josh Matthews, as we mentioned earlier, a high school senior, and then a college freshman, an adult, if you will, a person that shouldn't like a middle schooler, if you will, if you see where I'm going with this. Rather than being like, oh, she's a crush on him, he's too old, You're, that's cute, little cute little thing. Everyone just, all the characters encourage this. They're like, that's really cute. I love that. You two should be together. And it's like, mm, what are we doing here? What am I watching right now? This is an adult man, once again. There's an episode that I watched that is horrifying, where Maya sneaks away to a college party because she has to confess to Josh that she likes him before he goes off to college. And he's a high school senior that was invited to this college party. And so she goes... And instead of everyone being like, oh, that's cute, but you're in middle school, they're all like, just wait a couple years. He'll be with you. And then he's like, no, she's too young for me. And then all the college kids are like, you're crazy. She's perfect for you. She's amazing. I'll tell everyone you guys are dating next year if you don't just treat her well. And it's like, what am I watching right now? That's... That's not an appropriate relationship in the slightest. That's an eighth grader and a high school senior. Am I crazy? Why are we showing this to kids? It's like teaching them, if you like an older guy, go for him anyway, because he may like you. And that's what you want. You want to be with a guy that's on a whole other stratosphere, a maturity than you. He's about to go off drinking, and you're about to be in the ninth grade. You don't even have class periods or electives yet. So all the students threaten Josh and tell him that's the one for you. So this leads us to our next important backstory, how we get to the ski lodge. As I mentioned earlier, Lucas is both dating Riley and Maya at the same time because he's trash. He's trash. 
Maya is also dating Lucas. And as we explained earlier, Maya's whole character is that she's a rebel. She's a bad girl. She's Disney Sam Puckett. But then all of a sudden she starts doing long class. And she starts wearing new clothes and new hair. And everyone's like, you're changing. You're becoming Riley. God forbid. God forbid she get good grades. Everyone's like, you're not. They get mad. Riley's like, you're not standing on desks anymore. You're not getting detention anymore. Friend is poor. Your friend has a single mom who doesn't come to any of her events. Your friend literally stays at your house all the time to get away from things. She is failing out of school and you're mad when she starts doing good. You're a terrible friend. You're a terrible friend. She's literally improving herself and dating Lucas and Riley's pissed. And she's like, we need to get you out of here. We're taking you to the ski lodge. You need to find the old Maya because I don't like who you've become. So let's talk the ski lodge. So Corey, who runs the nature club, why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he run student government, a history class, and nature club? Those all go together. He's running nature club. Who's in it? You know, just the the characters of the show. You know, we don't need any extras. We don't need to learn about anyone. This is char- main character only type nature club. It's stupid. So they all decide to go to the ski lodge because Corey's like, this is where I need to go back to. This ski lodge where I almost cheated on my wife. You know who's chaperoning? Topanga. You know who else is chaperoning? The adult man, Josh Matthews. The adult man, Josh Matthews, is chaperoning this trip. And he's hanging out with the kids like he's there on their level. They're all high school freshmen. He's a college freshman. And he's playing like the cool guy role. He's like hanging out with them and trying to relate. He's the worst. He starts giving advice out like candy. He's like, let me help you out. Let me help you out. I'm mature. I'm mature. Red flag, if you will. And Riley's like, Maya's different. And then Josh, brilliant Josh, is like, oh, she doesn't actually like Lucas. She just wants to protect you. So she's becoming you to see if Lucas is a good guy for you. What type of writing is that? What does that even mean? What does that even mean? I don't even know what that means. That's nonsense. That's some weird old man manipulative bullshit. What is that? And Riley's like, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. Let me go talk to Maya. And Maya's like, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. I don't actually like Lucas. These past two seasons have meant nothing to me. I actually am just trying to protect you by becoming you. I'm going to go back to failing all my classes. Thank you very much. So then they start playing the relationship game, of course, with Josh, the chaperone. All these kids and Josh, the chaperone, start playing a game about relationships. The adult man starts playing a game about relationships with high school freshmen. Take that as you will. So jo- Maya's like, I need to talk to you. And she grabs Josh and they go off. And Maya's just like, I like you. I like you a lot. I don't like Lucas. I like you. And Josh, instead of shutting her down, is like, I have feelings for you too. <laughs> You're an adult man he's like we can't date yet though because i'm an adult and you're a child why would you put this on air disney channel so they literally go we can't date yet so let's play the long game and when you're out of high school and in college then we can date we like each other i like you 14 year old i am 18 year old in college i like you or 19 year old we don't even know his age 19 year old in college i have crush on you you are 14 wait wait around wait a while for me and i'll date you why would they put this for teenagers? Why would they show teenagers that? That is the worst messaging I've ever seen in my entire life. That is the worst thing that's ever happened. And that's illegal. Okay, the fact that people try to justify this shit by saying the Romeo and Juliet laws... If you have to justify something you're shipping with a law or statute, it's not good. It's not good. If you're like, well, technically it's not illegal. It's illegal. Techni- technically it's not illegal because because they met each other when they were in middle school and high school. And technically that means they're only this many years apart so they can date technically and then stay in New York at least. That's bad. That's illegal. Don't do that. Dum dum dum. This is disgusting. Why are we teaching teenagers and preteens and children that they can like older men and that older men will wait for them till they're 18 years old? Why are we doing this? We should not be doing this. 
This is by far the most frustrating thing I've seen in my life. And there's plenty of fan fiction about it. There's still ship edits to this day. People say that their top ship is Josh and Maya, Josh and Maya, Joshia. And so many people don't realize it's wrong because it's all over everything. Like, remember the most popular ship from Pretty Little Liars? I mean, that one, that one's really, really bad. Ezra and Arya. That we should not be teaching people to go after older men for sake of TV. Especially if you know your age demographic is all teenagers. Do not be showing these relationships. This is bad. Why was this on Disney Channel? Where were the producers? Where was the executives? Where was anyone with common sense? I did not even watch this episode. I could not watch this episode because I was so uncomfortable and it was so weird. It's so weird because it's a he knows it's illegal. He says we need to wait until you're 18. That is predatory language from a Disney Channel show. And I'm not blaming the actors because a job's a job. They're like children actors. How the hell are they supposed to know? It's on the writers. It's on the crew. It's on the people who actually are in charge of making decisions. There are fan fictions where they age Maya up. You're aging your character up so it can date the other one. Your ship's not good if you have to age a character up. So that's that. Season 3 aired and then the show was announced as being cancelled on January 4th, 2017. People were pissed. It was trending on Twitter. M Michael Jacobs was shocked. He was trying to find a new outlet for this show to go on. So the show gets cancelled. They say it's because of bad ratings. The ratings had been decreasingly dropping since the first episode, mind you. But everyone was shocked. I was tweeting, save Girl Meets World. I didn't think I was watching it at that point. And then so, since then, Michael Jacobs has claimed in the fourth season, if it were to happen, Maya and Riley will have discovered they were actually gay and start dating each other. Do I believe this? No. Here's why. This is a man who paired a college student with a high school freshman. This is a man who's created so many love triangles and things based off of one man and girls. I think the reason he said that is because Riley and Maya was one of the biggest ships at the time during the Girl Meets World era. Anywhere where you could really get Girl Meets World content, there were definitely Riley and Maya shippers. And the way he announced this information was around the same time of cancellation buzz. So it definitely was like he was trying to get, garner more interest from the fans and get petitions signed so his show could be renewed. So I do not think this was true. I think he's full of crap. Um, trigger warning, this next part contains mentions of sexual harassment and inappropriate relationships. Girl Meets World was not considered a safe set. It was revealed after it was canceled. Rowan Blanchard said in 2018, I had an instance when I witnessed somebody I worked with inappropriately touch someone else that I worked with who was a minor. I reported it to the showrunner and I was shunned for reporting it. This has also been confirmed further on Pod Meets World, which is a show where they recap the Boy Meets World episodes with the people who played Eric, Topanga, and Sean. Danielle Fisher, Ryder Strong, and Will Friedel talked about the unsafe environment on the Boy Meets World and Girl Meets World set. Will said, I got to come in occasionally and look at the entire thing was happening. You saw a lot of those traits where it was you'd walk in and somebody 13 or 14 would be sitting on somebody's lap who's 35. There's nothing overtly sexual about it, but it's still inappropriate. Danielle Fischel also said she reported inappropriate things happening on set and was shunned and treated as a problem by the showrunner, Michael Jacob. The trio also mentioned that their experience in Girl Meets World was completely ruined by the fact that the cast and crew was returning from Boy Meets World. I think this is something just to keep aware when we look at old children's media and we look at the writers and who's producing and just thinking about unsafe sets in general. There are many times where people had very bad experiences where they were not protected, such as Jeanette McCurdy's new book coming out has really brought a light to this. Alexa Nicholas, she's spoken about her time on Zoe 101. And I think you can't talk about Girl Meets World without acknowledging the fact that it has recently come out that is was also a very bad set. In conclusion, I can't lie. As a child, as a teen, I did love this show a lot. It meant a lot to me. I did enjoy, it was a show on Disney Channel about relatable people, you know, people that weren't rich or famous or rich and famous. However, looking back, clearly I was not being taught the right lessons and it definitely look, has left me with a lot of misinformation that I've had to teach myself and grow from. It's just frustrating because you learn a lot of your like social boundaries, what's cool, what's not cool. You learn that from the media. So if you're being taught, oh, autism doesn't teach you to love. You know, if you don't believe in something, you're all alone in the world. Communism's bad. 
it's okay to wait until you're 18 so you can be with an older guy. If you're getting all these messages from one of your favorite shows, plus seeing similar messages from other shows, it's gonna be ingrained in your brain that this is correct, this is what I'm seeing, this is what happens everywhere, this is what I need to believe. And I think it's really bad. And I also think it's frustrating looking back how all the reviews were so good for these episodes that were poorly written, reeked of like inf misinformation, sometimes propaganda even. I, I don't know if I'm missing something, but I just don't know how that's good. It's not a show just for entertainment. The show's purpose was to be educational. That's why they did lessons. That's why they were in a classroom. That's why they showed them solving problems and talking about values and morals. It wasn't a show like, for example, I am um, Live and Maddie, where they just did silly things and they got in trouble, but at the end of the day, everything was fixed. Those weren't relatable situations. That was made purely for humor. Girl Meets World was to like relate to people their age and teach them lessons. So you really can't be that irresponsible with something like that. I don't know where the producers were, but they weren't on set and they weren't verifying anything in these scripts. I would like some apologies and some explanations. Thank you very much. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed learning about all these crazy things. Um, and if you want more, please comment below. I'll see you next time.